integrating it is is many things and you know obviously your people are the most important yeah and and for the success of any merger it's it's going to involve the people more than i think people realize that it's about the people yeah. and you know you and, and being in two countries you're going to have cultural differences um you may or may not have some resistance to the um, merger. People may not understand the merger, what it means for them personally. Yeah. Um, how do you manage the time zones? How do you manage the currency? Um, so I think that's a number. I don't think I could state that enough. It's about the people because ultimately that's what's going to make or break it, uh, a successful merger. And then a second, of all, the clients, you have to think of your clients too. What's the message to the clients? Are they going to be nervous? Um, if you're a small, uh, a smaller like entity based in the city and owned by owners in the city, well, are the are the clients going to feel like, oh, I'm a, I'm just a small little client in a big conglomeration now? So yeah. you want your clients to continue to feel valued and as well, um, and you want your clients to be happy for you and understand why that this could benefit them a great deal as staff as well. I mean, suddenly if you merge, you've got more resources at your fingertips, you've got more training. You've got better coverage for mm -hmm. off hours, especially in our IT industry. We could have, um, you know, where our staff want to leave at five o'clock at night, but our clients are, you know, open longer hours. Well, there may be someone on another time zone can pick that up and, and help our clients. So there's lots of pluses, but people just need to understand that and not, you know, every, everybody on some level could be a, a little bit insecure. And this sometimes can touch on people's insecurities. Yeah. So you really need to, and so that's the people, the clients, but it's also, then you have to talk about your systems. Mm -hmm. You know, are we all, are we all using the same systems? Are we all getting our data the same way? Are we, are our processes the same? Do we treat our, are our contracts the same? Because for successful integration, you, you want to streamline everything because it just makes sense. You can't do one thing one way in one into in one location, another thing, another way. Like, it just gets too complicated. Yeah. And you want to streamline roles, you want to streamline processes, et cetera. And then financially, because I'm the director of finance based in Canada, mm -hmm. obviously has implications. You know, uh, what currency are we reporting in? How mm -hmm. do we report it? The frequency. Now that we have external owners, it could be much tighter timelines. You know, mm -hmm. it's not as perhaps uh, easygoing or, or you know, the, the timelines get stricter because they apply to everybody. and. Yeah. Uh, and and then what systems will we keep? What systems will we not keep? What systems, ha, who has the better systems? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of aspects. Yeah. <laughs> you can goes see. Into yeah. A lot goes into it. And how do you, how do you pull everyone together? Um, mm -hmm. We have weekly meetings for all staff. Yeah. Again, you have to pick a time that suits everybody. Yeah. You can't have people up at 7 a.m. <laughs> and one location whereas they normally start at nine they're not going to cover that meeting super happy um, <laughs> so you have to pick a, a convenient time for everybody and pull people into the meeting like have different people report different responsibilities so it's not just one person doing all the talking and how do you get to know each other because ultimately an integration is going to work if you get to know each if you personalize it yeah right because suddenly people will be reporting to someone that they're not going to meet in person anymore yeah. Um, you know, I now report to someone on the East Coast, which is a three hour time difference. Yeah. Um, I've had the the opportunity to meet the person, which is wonderful, but not everyone has that opportunity. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider. I'm based in Canada, so I had to change the currency I was okay. reporting in. And that was a big change. Um and, you know, the, the funny thing is with Canadian and U.S., we both refer to our currency as dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're entirely different currencies. Yeah. So we have to get everyone straight on that. You know, they'll say something like something's in dollars. And I'll always have to say, is that Canadian dollars or U.S. dollars? God, yeah. And, and they go, oh, right, right. Yes, so that's U.S. dollars. Okay, but dollars, not a dollar. We have to remember yeah. that, right? <laughs> yeah. <maybe. laughs> if we were like British pounds and a dollar, yeah. it wouldn't make that difference or yeah. you know, euro or something anyway so that's just but that's more about training the yeah. auditors are training <laughs> yeah and then as well often if you if you're merging from a, like a smaller firm you might not have been required to have an audit 
And um, as a result of the merger, all the offices now are part of the audit. So we're working with new new accounting audit team. And an audit is a much bigger deal. You know, things are scrutinized more. Um, you have to have all your paperwork in place more. We're subject to more auditing standards. Yeah. So we had to make some changes to how we um, record revenue or record inventory or things like that, because yeah. it's it's much stricter um, than if we were a non-audit. So that an audit is time consuming. So that's yeah. something we have to allow for. Um, again, tighter time deadlines. Um, so then, and we're also working with new people. Like we had to get an auditing firm and a firm that is international because yeah. they have to have a, an office in Canada because we still, you know, have some Canadian tax laws that need to be applied. Yeah. And then they have to have a strong presence in the United States for the same reason. So from a finance perspective, I think one of the biggest things is an audit. When you first go into a uh, merger, as I said, the, one of the things is you have a cutoff. The old company is ending, new yeah. company starting. So probably just want to make sure your cutoff is nice and clean. Yeah. You know, your revenue has a nice clean break, et cetera. Because if you don't, if it's not clean, and ours was, it was, it was pretty good, but I was glad it was good um, because you have to go back and kind of do a lot of reconciling and justify and all that. So that's just kind of a little heads up. Um, yeah. And then uh, from a finance perspective, I think try to make your processes as simple as possible and to be open-minded to other offices. What their, what are their finance processes? They may have a much better process. They mm -hmm. may record revenue in a way that you hadn't thought about. And that's like, that's a much simpler way. Or they might, because um, as soon as you accrue revenue or, you know, if you're not going to invoice the client right away, you're going to accrue it. Well, how do you do that? Or how frequent do you invoice a client, yeah. et cetera? Um, as well as collections, accounts receivable. Maybe they've got a way of collecting that, you know, how do they stay on top of, you know, cash flow, collections, et cetera. And, and financial controls, you know, who's going to approve payroll, who's going to approve um, uh, payments to, to vendors, et cetera. Yeah. So I think, uh, I know for, for us, the, the various finance departments were just really super friendly and open-minded and, yeah. and we all just kind of clicked. And yeah. I think uh, it just, it, it's a pleasure to meet with them now. And I think we're very fortunate to have such a, you know, a great and, and experienced people. Yeah. And that can go either way. You know, if you've been doing your job for 10, 12 years, you could resent someone coming in and saying, are you sure you want to do it that way? Yeah. <laughs> but if you're open-minded and saying, no, I just want to do it the best way, like help me find the best way. Yeah. And if you feel respected that you're listened to as well, like, well, why do you do it that way? You know, mm -hmm. Well, because I've always done it that way. Well, have you thought about doing it this way? Well, okay, I could do it that way. You know, so you really need to be open-minded and friendly. Yeah. And I think that comes from being treated with respect yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's that's more again, I go back to the people. I'm always yeah. about the people. Yeah. People, people, people. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> and and then, you know, how do we meet? timelines if you're because as i said the timelines are, are as stricter well is that possible mm -hmm. are there too many processes is it too time consuming what we're doing is it too laborious what we're doing mm -hmm. um so it's just having those dialogues those and probably regular touch points regular meetings i think really helps too